Today, we're gonna to learn about one of the most iconic and possible scientists, one of my favorites and the artist behind this painting, Leonardo da Vinci. Plus, I'm gonna show you how to create a device that will allow you to discover the golden ratio in his work as well as creations around the world. Welcome to Impossible Science. Now, Leonardo da Vinci will always be remembered as one of the greatest artists of all time, but he was so much more than that. He was a scientist, he was an engineer, he was an inventor, he was a mathematician. From Bone Sabani, Leonardo da Vinci wasn't interested in just how things looked, he was interested in how they worked. Da Vinci lived in the 1400s, but his mind was firmly in the future. Can you tell what this is? This is an armored car. The invention was sketched out by da Vinci in 1485 over 400 years before tanks were ever used in war. And this right here is a parachute. Da Vinci sketched out the design for this 500 years ago, and it wasn't even proven that it worked till the year 2000. And can you tell what this is? This is Da Vinci's design for a helicopter, another invention that was hundreds of years before its time. Now, Leonardo's curiosity and logical mind didn't just stop with inventing and engineering items. He actually found a way to blend mathematics into his artwork. And there's actually a proportion that shows up throughout his work. It's called the golden ratio. The idea behind the golden ratio is that if you had a line and you were to break that line into portions, and let's say this was B and this was A, the question is, could there be a ratio of A, this length, over this length, that is equal to the total length, so A plus B, over this length. So when you think about it, it's the long over the short is equal to the long over the short. And it turns out that number is consistent no matter how long the line is. And it comes out to be 1.618033988748949895. Okay, it goes on forever. It's an irrational number. It means it cannot be defined by a fraction. And if you want to learn more about irrational numbers, check out the Wonder and Pi video from Impossible Science. So now that we know that there's this ratio between the small and the large. So if I take A and I place it here, you can say that we have A and A versus A plus B. So now you can say this, this long line versus the short line, you can actually see how we could create a golden triangle. Now, if we actually extend this up, Now you can see that the proportions between the long and the short has actually made a golden rectangle. Now, why is this cool? Because if we take a golden rectangle and we drop a square in there, so we take A and A, so this is a square. Guess what happens over here? The remaining piece is still a golden rectangle. And it keeps happening over and over and over. So if you were to take a compass like here and you were to draw this up to get a square, so that, that distance is equal to this distance. Cool part about it, this rectangle right here is a golden rectangle. And let's just keep going. Now, because I'm using a felt tip marker, uh, as I get smaller and smaller, it becomes a little bit more and more inaccurate. But you can see how if I just keep making a square inside a golden rectangle, we make another golden rectangle. So now we know that if we take a golden rectangle and we drop a square and we get a smaller golden rectangle. But here's where the cool part comes in. If you take a compass and we make this arc from this corner and we swing it in, we get this curve. If we do it again from this corner, that's more accurate, you get this curve. And we just keep doing this in, you get this really cool spiral. Now, does this look familiar? This is the same spiral you'd find in a snail shell or you'd find it in the curve of a wave. It turns out this golden spiral shows up all throughout nature. And it's pretty amazing to know that this number just pops up everywhere. There's another faster way to do this. This is a golden ratio caliper. This will keep the proportions of the golden ratio no matter what distance. Once you have one of these, you can find the golden ratio anywhere. So you can actually test it out. So you can see how this point, this point, and this point is golden ratio. But if I wanted to change it and actually see if I can do it with something smaller, you can see how it matches no matter the width. Now, if you don't have one of these, 
I got you. Below you'll find a download of this. You can actually cut out these pieces, pin them together, and you have your own little golden ratio caliper. The Mona Lisa. Arguably the most beautiful painting of all time. Leonardo da Vinci's most famous work. If you're armed with golden ratio calipers, you can find it all throughout this picture. You can find out that from the top of the head to her chin, it's also the top of the painting to her head. It's also the width of her face. You can even find it if you actually do the chin, the lips, you can get the eyes. And if you went across the eyes, you can actually get the width of her eyes. Her nose lines up exactly with the golden ratio. Coincidence? I think not. Take a look at The Last Supper. Now, if you go online and you look up the Golden Ratio and The Last Supper with Da Vinci, you'll find out that the Golden Ratio shows up in all the architecture in the buildings. So like even just the table, you can also find it in the doorways. Now you can find the Golden Ratio in the structure of how everything's been balanced out in the picture. But the one that really catches my attention is, I start goofing around with these on this painting and I found out it's everywhere. Take a closer look at, the, at these little patterns on the tablecloth. If you take a look at this rectangle that's in there, that height versus that width, the tablecloth has a pattern of the golden rectangle, but it doesn't stop there. You can get the potatoes on the table at the Last Supper to match up with the golden ratio. You can get the plates to match up with golden ratio. Even the individuals in the picture are laid out with the golden ratio. Is this a coincidence or is this magic? And now people are taking the golden ratio and turning them into sculptures. So like this is called a bloom created by John Edmark, uh, who's a brilliant mathematician and artist who's using the golden ratio to create these 3D printed sculptures. Now each one of these little squares on this, on this particular sculpture is 137 and a half degrees from its next frame. Now, why does that matter? Well, that's the same pattern of the golden curve, the golden ratio that we calculated. When I place it here, and I get this drone motor to spin it really fast and I hit it with a strobe light, well, this still sculpture comes to life. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my experiment with the golden ratio and learning about the mysteries behind Da Vinci's paintings. And if you did, let me know. Like the video, share the video with your friends. And until next time, stay curious. Because the right question changes everything.